what's up everybody this is kyle jones of jones sport fishing and you're uh once again listening to another podcast fishing with kyle hey we just want to thank you guys so much for uh joining us for our second rendition of this uh podcast um we're just kind of thrilled that people actually listened to the last one and we just want to thank you guys so much We've had a number of really great comments um and we're gonna we're gonna address some of those today um and uh, just kind of go from there. But our focus today is going to be on, last week we touched kind of on our basics of fishing crankbaits, the walleye plug selection, um, that kind of thing. Today we're going to dive a little bit deeper into that. We're going to, uh, you know, on our Tip Tuesday from this week, we talked about, we kind of threw it out there and hinted that guys really should be learning how to troll with uh, lead core, you know, and, and for helping get baits down. So we'll talk a little bit about more about lead core trolling. Um, and then we'll also we're also going to sort of break down, you know, structure, where we're tr- you know where we're trolling, whether it's it's in relationship to structure, the depths that we're looking for right now, um, yeah, and just kind of if you were looking at the river, how you would find walleye and how how you would break it down. Um, so just kind of a quick recap of sort of how our week's gone this week. Um, this is March. Oh, I guess what March 18th um, last week we started our walleye season and uh, on the last Thursday it was absolutely incredible we had some fantastic fishing um, then some weather came in we fished pretty darn well through the weather um, and then uh, went home for a couple days and we back fishing today and uh, we got on some fish we didn't have a red hot day or anything but we definitely caught some fish sun was out it was beautiful uh, you can see we're coming at you guys today from the uh, quality Inn in Umatilla Oregon it's a pretty decent place to stay while you're here it's nice quiet rooms and uh, yeah it's a spot we like to stay but so let's um, let's just kind of jump right into this and uh, yeah just kind of go so on our tip Tuesday this week we we talked about how one of the things that we do is we incorporate lead core line so that's the leaded line you know the trolling line that people you know grandpa probably used for trout all that kind of stuff um, and how we use that to better our crankbait trolling and then also um, kind of what water we're looking for. So lead core, just for a brief overview, it's a, uh, it's a nylon sheath with, a, with a, a lead center, a lead solid lead line running through it and it comes in a multiple of different sizes. We fish the 18 pound um, suffix lead core it's readily available I don't know that the brand matters but uh, that's what we buy um, and what that allows us to do is it really allows us to be able to fish any plug in our tackle box um, whether it's it's shallow divers deep divers shad style baits um, smaller deep divers that might only go 11 feet and we're trying to get them to fish 20 ish um, it allows us to troll with not as much setback we're able to run our line shorter a lot of times when we're running you know something on a flat line we're probably a hundred hundred twenty five hundred and fifty feet back behind the boat um, if we're running lead core we're able to shorten those up big time um, you know we're we can fish 20 feet of water with 70 feet of line out you know that kind of thing you know so it's a major help to us also lead core enables you to uh, very very easily troll upstream and to troll downstream which is a key today because a couple of the fish we got today and it really we didn't get a lot of fish today so the couple that we got um, we had a pretty good bite for oh probably about 10 minutes but uh, we got a couple fish ding ding downstream trolling um, these husky jerks this husky jerk number 10 in uh, in 25 to 30 feet of water, you know, and we were able to fish that with only, you know, 55, 60 feet of line out, just barely crawling along, getting that thing to just wag us. So lead core is something that I just, I challenge everybody to kind of dig into it and, uh, and learn how to use it. We're still definitely exploring and finding all the things for it, but it is, uh, it is something that can really open up your walleye game and, and make you a lot better. Um, especially when you start trolling those things going downstream you know we talk about trolling most of the time we're talking about trolling into the current going upstream but we've found um, 
I, I started doing it last summer and then again we, we did it today. Um, we found that flipping the boat around and actually trolling downstream just like we would with a bottom bouncer and a worm harness is an incredibly effective method to catch fish and to frankly cover a lot of water. So that's kind of the name of the game. I mean, as I said, I've said before, I, um, I've almost become obsessed with trolling plugs for walleye. Um, the amount of river and the amount of area that we're able to cover is, is incredible. If I have a bunch of lines out in the boat, if I've got four, five, six people in the boat, I can run a mix of long lines, I can run lead core and planer boards, and I can cover an area that's three times the width of my boat. I mean, some of the stuff you're able to do pulling crankbaits, you just you wouldn't be able to do doing other things. And the amount of ground and space that you're able to cover in search of fish is pretty darn incredible. So, like I said, man, crankbaits are something that I've, I've really gotten, um, gotten into. And so what I wanted to do today after that sort of babbling deal there is um, I want to talk about kind of breaking down the microhabitat on the river and really plugging in to what places you're going to be able to catch fish. How I'm not going to tell anybody exactly where to go. That part you can figure out on your own. But um, there's a lot of things in structure-wise and how fish relate to structure, current, deep water that will really help. So I guess one of the things I wanted to, to start out with is we're not just aimlessly trolling. You know, we don't just point it in a direction and start aimlessly trolling. I mean, I am on my GPS, on my mapping software, on my, on my chart plotter, and I am trolling specific depths. I'm trolling specific ledges. I'm specific depth ranges. I mean, it, this, is, this is targeted. This isn't just throw them out there and start dragging them all over the place and hope something happens. I mean, I am targeting certain places in the water. And so in the Columbia, these, your baits really, they gotta be on the bottom. We don't see fish suspend very often. We just, we just don't have that scenario with the current. But um, a few of the things that is big is, is structure. And structure can be anything from a ledge, a flat, um, a feature like a point, an eddy line, anything that's gonna that's going to concentrate fish in a certain in a certain spot is something that I would consider structure. But so like right now, one of the things that we're doing a ton is most of the big walleye. I mean, you can most of the big fish are up shallow. They're shallower than they're less than. 20, 25 feet. Um, they're staging in areas where they're where they're going to be looking to spawn, and so those big females are not in the deep water. They're not in the 50, 60 foot water where you might find a decent amount of smaller males. Um, they are up shallow, and and so trolling crankbaits is the best way at them. So one of the things, if I was if I was going to look at a new piece of water, the first thing that I would look for is I would get on my chart plotter. On my phone, I've got an app called uh, Garmin Active Captain, and it actually ties in with my Garmin unit on my boat. And it's got depth shading. So I can go in there and I can set all the depth shading to you know, 20 to 25, you know, 15 to 25 foot increments, and it shows different colors on a map. So if I'm looking for certain depth ranges, I don't have to guess. I can pull up my phone, and I can start looking around and I can find what depths that I'm going to be looking for. So first thing I do is right now what I'm doing is I'm targeting water that's that's 25 feet and less for the most part. Um, we caught a couple of fish today and right about 30 but typically and that but that was right off of the edge of an island where it dropped off and leveled out. But typically right now I'm looking at water that's anywhere from is less than 25 feet. 25 to 15, it seems like if you get shallower than 15, you end up with a lot of uh, a lot of grass and a lot of trash in the water and it becomes hard to fish there, especially dragging a crankbait. So anything less than 15, I'm a little bit suspect unless it's in an area with a high current. Um, but so I go with that depth shading and you're able to narrow those places down. So the first thing I look at is I look for what depth I'm looking for. So I go in there and I've got my depth shading and say I'm looking for 20 to 25 feet. Well, it shows on color immediately 
every place in the river that's 20 to 25 feet on the mapping on on my phone so I don't even have to be on the water to do this I do most of my scouting from the the couch the hotel room whatever I need to do I've got a plan uh, when I'm when I'm looking for new water and so I look for those depth ranges the next thing I look for is how close is that water to shallow water and I'm talking like shallow like like a couple of feet, anywhere where those fish at night could raise up onto those shallow banks and feed in the shallow water, or raise up there and spawn. Those areas that are that are that have the depth that I'm looking for, that are adjacent to shallow water, those are places that I'm immediately going to look at. The next thing I'm going to look at is how much area is that? Is that on a slope? Is it a flat where that water's at? Um, and what I'm looking for is places where there's a little bit of a flat. So I'm looking for a spot where there's a little bit of a wide area that's, you know, 20, 25, 18, 18, 19 to 25 feet. That's the, that's the range I'm looking for. I want to see it on a flat. I want to see it adjacent to shoreline structure, big rocks on the bank, points, places that are going to collect bait fish, the type of places that, that you would imagine a big fish hunting around in the dark being able to find anything that it wants to eat. Um, those are the things that I'm, that I'm looking for. Also, the best case scenario is if you find that, that, that depth range on a flat, near shallow water, but with also with a deep water refuge near it. So if, if there's 50, 40, 50, 60 foot water somewhere close to where those fish could transition on and off of that, but yet there's that there's that kind of intermediate flat in there and then there's the shallow water nighttime feeding area those kind of places are are optimal the thing with walleye that you have to always be thinking about is those things they are looking to eat other than during the spawn the big fish are looking to be in the absolute best position they can be to fill their guts full of food that's their number one job safety and food and food over safety and so you'll find these fish in places where they have quick access to shallow water habitat or in the case of we a lot of times that structure that we're talking about and current break comes in the form of a dam we know that at dams there's lots and lots of food that gets flushed through the system during the spring we get mass in the Columbia River we get millions and millions of smolt that migrate down the river salmon steelhead smolt shad smolt We've got these mass migrations of food flowing through these areas near dams. And so if you can find those current situations, you want to, when, when you're fishing near the dam, dams, you want to stay out of the main flow of current, but you want to be in those places where it'd be easy for a fish to find food. So we're still talking 20, you know, 18, 19, maybe 15 feet there because you're not going to have the draft issues. 15 to, you know, 20 feet, 25 feet, slightly out of the main current on some sort of a flat um, with that you know deep water dams that kind of thing bringing that food to them um, I mean that's just food 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 is the number one thing that I that I see with walleye and matching the hatch matching your crankbaits to what they're probably feeding on mostly size um, sometimes color we can roll through colors a lot of times you know, a, a silver and um, black pattern like this one I have in my hand um, will be very good in direct sunlight. It might not be as good first thing in the morning. You might want to go with more of a solid. But um, so hopefully that kind of helps with uh, what areas you're going to be looking for targeting these fish with crankbaits. Um, I I find myself fishing those those places more and more with lead cores just because it gives me such a variety of baits that I can choose and I can I can pick any any plug that I want that has you know that has the characteristics that I'm looking for and then I can also fish it in other places but um, yeah lead core lead core lead core learn to use lead core and you guys will end up being better walleye fishermen um, there's some great videos out there teaching you how to set up lead core how to um, determine crankbait diving depth with that lead core. Um, I don't really, it, it's been done, so I don't see a need to, to beat that um, to, a, to a pulp, but um, lead core will help you.
And the other thing, you know, we uh, just kind of want to talk about what what we're going to see here coming up with this walleye season, at least this spring part of the season. Right now, we're, we're still pre-spawn. Water temp today, we're close to 42. And with these, uh, once that water temp gets between 45 and 48, these fish will start to spawn. And so when that happens, a lot of the males will still be available to catch, but a lot of the big females, um, they're going to be solely focused on the spawn and they'll be tough to catch. Those males will still be available and they, they'll be in areas that are near where those females are at. So you'll be, you'll be in those places, you'll be able to catch fish through the spawn. And then post-spawn, after about the first week of April, we, we start to see the spill increase on the Columbia. And so we'll start to see heavy current, um, you know, raging current at times, and, and our walleye fishery is going to totally change. Um, for me, it totally changes when that happens, and we start targeting um, slower water areas, areas out of the main flow. Um, I'm probably going to put the crank, I'll probably put the crankbaits away for a while, and I'll start fishing bottom bouncers and, and worm harnesses just for the ability that I can fish those very effectively in very small, tight places where I feel like those fish are at. So what we're talking about right now with this pre-spawn thing and crankbaits, we've got maybe, uh, we've got a little bit more time on it, but uh, if things are going to change, there's gonna be a massive change in what happens. And um, all these things that we're talking about crankbait wise, they're gonna come back into play after the water, um, after spring runoff, things start to slow down a little bit. We'll be able to get back on some fantastic crankbait fishing, some summertime crankbaits where we're moving fast, uh, covering a lot of water, and uh, and having a bunch of fun. So I know uh, maybe kind of rambled around there a little bit, but hopefully I gave you guys some information that can help you when you look at when you show up at the ramp or you're at home and you're wondering how am I going to go about this? How am I going to go find fish? Hopefully some of that stuff I just talked about. Um, can help you guys. The other thing is, is I've got blog articles um, on our web website, jonesportfishing.com, that detail our how we go about fishing plugs. It's uh, we're in a we're going to do a multi-part series right now. We've got up the uh, the how the pre-spawn what we've been talking about lately. That's up there in written form, so you guys can get that. It's uh, how to take your walleye game to the next level. Plugs, um, how to catch walleye. Um, that's on our website. Also, how we fish bottom bouncers. We call that how to catch Columbia River walleye the easy way because we feel like that's a great way for somebody who's never never gotten into it to uh, to dive right in and start experiencing this great fishery. But anyway, guys, yeah, we're gonna be fishing walleye hard for oh the next or oh, the next month, and uh, we'll take a little we'll take a we'll back off a little bit, fish some Drano Lake Spring Chinook. Uh, Wind River Spring Chinook, but May will be big time walleye, uh, June, and, and part of July. So anyway, hope, hopefully this helps. Uh, make sure that you guys subscribe, share this around. It helps us a ton. And also, like, like I said last week, is we really want this to be about you guys. We want to be able to answer your questions. I'll go into as deep a dive on stuff as people are willing to go. Um, and so those questions are really what's going to drive this. If you guys don't answer questions, you're just going to have to deal with whatever I want to talk about, which I don't even know what I want to talk about. So and ask those questions. If I confused you, good. Ask some questions. I'll try to respond to them in comments. Um, I try to get to everybody's comment. You know, So please write those comments down. I see them. Subscribe to our YouTube. Make sure that you listen to this podcast. Um, yeah, and if you want to see daily fishing pictures, our Instagram and our Facebook page are great, great places for that. They're both uh, Jones Sport Fishing, at Jones Sport Fishing on both Instagram and Facebook. So anyway, guys, I really appreciate you guys listening to me um, and being part of this adventure. And hopefully some of this helps. And please let us know what you think. We'll catch you guys next time. Thanks.